I'm Elton John, and I've only agreed to be on the show if Graham promises to make no mention of my flamboyant past. <laughs> Welcome to the Graham Norton Show! the big news this week there's been an agreement on how to work out the divorce bill and it could total up to 45 billion pounds <gasps> bit depressing I mean they only got engaged on Monday <laughs> no no huge congratulations to Prince Harry on his engagement to Meghan Markle isn't it wonderful it's nice isn't it it's nice yes your classic riches to riches story um, that's Meghan on the right waving Bye, commoners. <laughs> I'm a princess. Uh, Megan has said she can't wait to start undertaking royal engagements and meet the British public. Oh, she is a good actress. <laughs> uh, Megan's already good friends with Wills and Kate. They've been on a few double dates. But to avoid the press, Megan's been wearing a disguise. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if she was in that thing? Hey, let's get some guests on! She has sold over 42 million albums, won three Grammys, and is simply one of the coolest pop stars on the planet. Please welcome Pink! <laughs> yes! You're actually Pink! Hey! Hello, darling. Hello, Welcome back! Thank you. It's Pink, everybody. He's a writer or actor, comedian, academic. Is there anything this man can't do? Please welcome Mr. Stephen Fry! Oh. She's the British actress who starred in An Education, Drive, The Great Gatsby, and Suffragette. It's always a pleasure to welcome Kerry Mulligan. <laughs> oh. Hello, my dear. Lovely to see you. Have a seat, Kerry Mulligan. And he's here to celebrate an extraordinary. 50 years in the music business with his ultimate greatest hits collection, Diamonds. Please welcome a true music legend, Sir Elton John! <laughs> Welcome. Uh, nice to see you all. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Now, it is an embarrassment of musicians. Obviously, we've got uh, Sir Elton, Robbie Williams coming on later. But Pink, you are performing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, is that going to be weird, uh, performing in front of Elton and Robbie? Or do you... Do you... I mean, uh, I'm going to try not to be awful. <laughs> <laughs> we played at a festival together in Belgium. Yes, it was fun. So, um... And uh, what are you giving us tonight? What about us? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> This album, Beautiful Trauma, which is such a huge success, uh, I didn't realise until you were going on the show that it's been five years of five no six. pink in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't realise that either. But how was, did that happen? I was doing bake sales in <laughs> <laughs> kindergarten. <laughs> uh, but I read somewhere when you decided to bring out a new record, your, your record company sat you down for the talk. The talk that if you're over 35 as a female uh, pop star, that radio probably won't play you. No. Yes. So were they just kind of. I had that trouble myself. <laughs> 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 well, you, you proved them wrong. I did. Yeah. I did Big very, time. very much. That's it, nice. Yeah. Very good. So. In terms of musical credentials, uh, Stephen, I, I'm right in saying you, you're, not a, you're not a great gift to song. No, I, there are so many things I can't do. I, I can't do that. I've never been able to cross my legs. <laughs> Even when I was in you know, kindergarten, there was a little play mat and all the other children, uh, my knees were touching my cheeks. I, could not, I can't do that. They would break my hips. But I've never been able to sing. And it's official. I'll tell you why it's official. Um, John Schlesinger, the film director, was a friend. When he died, there was a funeral at a synagogue in North London, and I found myself next to Paul McCartney at this funeral. 
And after a couple of the hymn songs things, he turned to me and said, because I always mime because I can't sing, he said, sing, sing, you're not singing, sing. <laughs> I said, I said, Paul, I, I can't sing. Everybody can sing, sing. So the next one came up and I started to say, shut up, you're right, you can't sing. <laughs> If Paul McCartney tells you you can't sing, you can't sing. It's Aww. official. But, now, Kerry Mulligan, you, you're, you're sort of, you've married into the music industry. Yep. Yes, uh, with <laughs> yeah, Marcus, Marcus yep. Mumford. But now, you've talked on the show, though, about how you are a proper fan and you've written fan letters to actors. But did you write fan letters to, to pop stars? Were you a fan of those? I... Uh, yeah, I, uh, I wrote to Eminem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How old were um, you? Was sweet. I was 18. <laughs> I was, no, I was 17. I was, I was applying to drama school um, and I watched 8 Mile and uh, he does that Lose Yourself song. Yeah. I can't say anything yeah. like this without sounding. And, um, and I, got, I got really kind of... It spoke to you. Yeah, it really spoke to yeah. me. Yeah, 8 Mile. I yeah. Really <laughs> 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 I wrote a very long letter detailing how he had inspired me to go in and like crush it in my drama school auditions. Oh, and did he write back? No, he didn't. Oh. He doesn't read letters. That's how that yeah. girl died in Dear Stan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he should really read the letters. <laughs> um, Eminem, he's on the album. Yes. Yeah. I wrote him an email. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and did he write back? I professed my undying love for him in this email. And I said, um, I love you. I've always loved you. I've loved you since I got your autograph in 2001 at the MTV Video Music Awards. I love that you always work with the same people. For instance, Rihanna, and she's hotter than me, but I'm funnier. Can <laughs> you just help me get my rap Grammy? And he just wrote back, okay. And that was it. Wow. One but, word. But he did. You, you, you kind of corrected some of his less politically... Well, he was accused of being homophobic yeah. by so many people um, because of his lyrics, which I thought was nonsense. Yeah. And I came out and supported the fact that he isn't. And mm -hmm. um, I appeared on the Grammys with him doing Stan instead of Dido. I did the Dido part. Oh, right. I, yes, um, I was the one that took the L out of Dido. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we became friends, and we've been amazing friends ever since. Yeah. He's. Um, He's an amazing guy. I spoke to him last week. I interviewed him last week for a magazine. Really? And um, I just adore him. Yeah. I do too. He's quite a poet, isn't he? Mm. Oh, am I allowed to say what's in your house? Oh, yes, for my marriage. When I, David and I did our civil partnership, um, <laughs> I got this package from Eminem and shows you how homophobic he isn't. We had two diamond encrusted cock rings. <laughs> 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 Cushions. <laughs> For the men who have yes. everything. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, they, and I have to say, they have remained unused. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, talking of diamonds, yes. uh, you bring us your ultimate collection, uh, yeah. diamonds. And this is out now, and it really is fantastic. It is the definitive uh, collection of, of your work. Yeah. It's, what is it? I think it's, oh, it's nearly 50 tracks. Right. And um, you know this, right? <laughs> have you seen this before? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that movement, yes. <laughs> and why, why diamonds? Just I chose the title because I didn't want it to be called Greatest Hits Volumes 3, 4 or whatever, because it's boring. And I just, you know, I've always liked diamonds, and I've always worn diamonds, and I just thought diamonds is what the world needs at the moment, or for me anyway, so I did, it's a cheerful title. And uh, you, very kindly, or someone, has put together a kind of a montage of uh, some of your career. And uh, this is it. Yes, I do. How wonderful life is while you're... To see it kind of read or digest it like that know, is so amazing. And it brings about so many memories for all of us. I can't imagine without just your head watching that. I don't really reflect on things very much. When you see things like that, you think, God, how do I do this? How do I cram it all in? We had so much fun. And, uh, you know, I just, I've always loved doing what I've done. And I've always been lucky enough to be able to do what I've done. And, you know, the secret to longevity, as you can ask Pink as a performer, is if you can play live, it doesn't matter how many hits you've got. Um, 
you will always be successful. And the other thing that I think this, this whole collection is, it's not just a celebration of you, but also of Bernie, you, Bernie Taupin, and, and the work you've done together. We've never had an argument. We've never written a song in the same room. He gives me a lyric, I go away, I write the music, and then I call him in and I play it to him. Um, we've kept the process fresh by doing that, so that even now when I get a lyric, which would probably be my thousandth lyric from him, I go away and I get excited by looking at the lyric and writing the song, so it hasn't changed. So it's never got old. And even though I behave so badly at times in my life, and he's ran me up the next day and said, hmm, do you remember what you did last night? And I go, no. Um, <laughs> we've never had an argument. And I'm so proud of the fact that in this business, um, we, we're stronger together now than we ever have been. And, and uh, that's, that makes me feel good. And all these years later, uh, your first hit, your song, was just voted, I think, by the, for yeah. the nation's favourite uh, yeah. Elton John song. Yeah. Um, now, am I right to think that's yours, Stephen? I love it. Absolutely love it. Do you remember we did a sketch with Rowan Atkinson At mocking the, the lyrics of it? Yes, of course. These yeah. things I forget, your eyes, are they the green or are they blue? <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics are extraordinary because they're so... There, nothing had been heard like that before, no. and the way you marry with your voice, it is still, and that was the last song that was played on that yeah. package, I noticed, because it, it just speaks in a way that... I mean, that and Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, because I always think of George Michael when yeah. I hear that, yeah. and the, the extraordinary thing you did. Thank God it wasn't Chirpy <coughs> Chirpy Cheap Shoot. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favourite band? No What's that? Do you have a favourite Elton John song? I feel like just throw a dart, and that's my favourite. <laughs> but I will say, if I have to say, Tiny Dancer. Oh, I was going to say Tiny yeah. Dancer. Yeah. Oh. And at the moment, isn't that your favourite at the moment, Tiny Dancer? I love Tiny Dancer. It's, it's funny, I play these songs so many times, but the more you play them, um, you realise how wonderful the lyrics are. Um, and the older you get, you hopefully have more fun with the song. People like Frank Sinatra used to do it, and they've sung those songs so many times. Nina Simone, every time you saw her sing, she'd interpret a song differently, and that's what I try and the storytelling, do. Storytelling, isn't yeah. it? The lyrics are so crucial to great. Yeah, the lyrics just tell, he's a storyteller. Yeah. So. When I, up until about two years ago, I thought it was, lay me down in sheets of amber, and I was yeah. like, he has sheets of amber, you guys. No. <laughs> 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 isn't it that? What is not, it? I think it's sheets of... Linen? Mm. What is it? In fact? Well, sh lay me down in sheets of linen. It's oh, linen. Yeah. yeah. I I, it was Amber, people thought it was, was hold like, me closer, wow, Tony he's Danza. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Danza. Tony Danza. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You say we had a lot of fun. You're still having fun. I mean, oh, of course, life is about having fun, but my fun is focused now on my children. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have, I'm lucky enough to still have the career, but my fun is now, you know, I'm going to my youngest nativity play tomorrow, and I'm so excited. Yes. Um, that's what yes. my life is about now, <laughs> and uh, it's all about them. The focus is off of me and onto them, yeah. and at this stage of my life, it's kind of nice to be able to do that. Yeah. And uh, in terms of Zachary and Elijah, is there a favourite dad's music? No. Oh. They like ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> they like. They do like Tiny Dancer. They like Leave On, um, but they they really like it's, it's Thunderstruck and because it is Iron Man. They love ACDC, and um, that's what we have to put on the car when we go in. <laughs> they like I'm still standing, but it's ACDC first. That's a great visual. Because uh, Pink, you're a little boy. Now, the last time you were here, you were saying that he wasn't particularly a fan. Has it, has it changed? He cries when I sing. No. <laughs> yes. Well, now he stopped crying, finally. He's 11 months. Now he just looks away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, how cute. And Willow tells me my singing is distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But I thought Willow was quite into it, no? She likes Sia. Oh, OK. She prefers Sia. <laughs> oh, kids are cool, aren't they? <laughs> I picked her up from first grade, and one of her little friends was like, so raise your glass up, singing to me. And Willow rolled her eyes, and she goes, that's not even one of the good ones. <laughs> Six. <laughs> uh, now, talking of children's favourites, uh, Harry Potter, the, the audiobooks, how many hours of Harry Potter <laughs> did you have to read? God, I think it's uh, over 100, isn't it? I, I, well, of course, it, when it started, um, my agent called me up and said, there's this book called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. That's what it's called in England and America. It's Sorcerer, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Philosophers are rather frightening. <laughs> 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 um, All right. Sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, 
anyway, there was, it was a book, and, and so I read it, and it was a, there was this boy, and apparently he was a wizard, and I, I met the author, who's called Joe Rowling, and she was really nice, and, and we read the book, and she said, oh, I, I've actually, there's another one, there's a second one I've written, I said, good for you! <laughs> 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 Little realising what had happened, but over the years, this extraordinary phenomenon blossomed. There was a, and I loved reading them. Occasionally, people, <laughs> there was a man stopped me in the street not long ago, and he pointed, at, shouted across the street, "My children go to bed with you." <laughs> <laughs> Please rephrase that. Okay. Now, Gary, Gary Mulligan's film uh, is Mudbound. Now, this film, it's currently available on Netflix. It's, it's streaming now. But it has had the most incredible reviews and there's kind of a lot of awards buzz about it. So, whet their appetite. What is it about? Uh, it's about a really interesting period of history that I didn't know very much about. So, it's um, post-Second World War, pre-civil rights. So, it's about two families living on the same land and two soldiers coming home from the war. One is white and one is black. And uh, the battalions were all segregated. So, um, so black soldiers were going over and fighting for their country, but then coming home to a segregated society. So it's kind of about that, but it's a family drama within that. So it's about these two soldiers who become... In friends. Mississippi? In Mississippi, it? yeah. yeah. It's the mud state, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. very. We were filming outside in Louisiana, filming outside of New Orleans. It's very hot, um, very muddy, lots of mosquitoes. And extraordinarily, we had a snake wrangler on set, <gasps> and his only job was to go around the set and clear uh -huh. the deadly snakes that uh -uh. were trying to kill us. <laughs> so he would go around and sort of pocket these snakes and then put them in a bucket in the back of his What van. kind of snakes? Uh, the very dangerous ones, oh. apparently. I mean, I didn't get to... <laughs> I don't know the species. <laughs> species? I've just taken Dana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the species of the snakes, I'm not entirely... Um, but um, but they, needless to say, they were trying to kill us, and um, he saved us all. We've got a little clip. This is you. Basically, so things start well, and then it's go... all going great, and then we move to the mud, and things and go wrong. Things go. And uh, this is you uh, begging your husband not to make a bad situation even worse. But I'm telling you now, we are not getting rid of that piano. It's the one civilized thing in this place. So your father can either sleep in the lean-to or he can sleep in the bed with you because I'm not staying here without my piano. <laughs> what you? You are overtired. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. There's a sort of unrecognisable Mary J. Blige in this yeah, film. Yeah, which is amazing. Uh, and, again, uh, fabulous reviews. Wow. And, the, and that, how hard is it for an actress to get over the fact that that's Mary J. Blige? It's quite hard, initially, <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you sort of... Well, it's like, you know... I sit, I'm sitting at this, I, I've just been feeling completely, I may be the day nurse, but I'm just sitting here yeah. next to these extraordinary people. It's completely blowing my mind. But, like, I look at Pink and in my head, I'm like, singing just like a pill, and I can't stop singing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm without it, and I'm like, oh, time dancer. You know, so it's quite hard to concentrate on people around me. Um, so with Mary, that was going on in my head for the first couple of days. And then she became this character, and then it was just, she was a totally different person. Because, Pink, I know you wanted to work with Major, Major Blake. I did. Yeah. She's one of the first people I ever approached. Uh, I walked into her trailer a long, long, long time ago on my first album, and I said, would you work with me? And she looked at me and said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, cool, I love you. I love you so much. Bye! But I respected it. I like, I like when people are honest. Rather, Rather than, than, yeah, call me. <laughs> yeah. So, I liked it. Because, Elton, you've made uh, a few forays into film. Uh, you were just in a uh, big British hit, The Kingsman, The yeah. Golden Circle. Yes, I didn't know what I was going to let myself in for, but uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it because I don't like doing music videos. In fact, I stopped doing them years ago because a lot of hanging around backstage and I get bored. But actually, I had incredible fun. But I, my scenes were with Colin Firth and Julianne Moore. So it, it was pretty fantastic. And let's not forget your marvellous work in one of the most successful British films of all time. That film is... Spice World. Oh. <laughs> um, yes. There you are. Uh, uh, do your cameo. Yeah. Do you have any memory of that day at all? It was done at the BBC, that's all. Because <laughs> uh, that's all I can remember. Um, in the BBC lobby, I think.
I'm pretty, you were sure, in that I, film. I'm pretty sure I was in that film as well. Yeah, you were. I was a kind of judge or something. Yeah. I remember. I remember. So the reason I did it, I don't know if you were saying, is because I had nephews and nieces, and if I hadn't done it, they would have killed me. Exactly. Because I could get their autographs. That's how huge they were. There was this period when they were bigger than anything on the planet, wasn't there? Exactly. And and I remember Victoria Beckham came up. Not Beckham, she wasn't then. Victoria, whatever she was then. Adam. Adam. Posh Spice, I think her name was. She kept and she read one of my novels. She said, "You wrote a book called The Hippopotamus," and I just fell in love completely. I just thought, what a cool, stylish, clever woman. Whatever you think, these Spice Girls, no, they've got something, I think. Yeah. And actually, I remember... <laughs> <laughs> the Prince of Wales had... Still his... lying. <laughs> it was before Wikipedia, so how would she have looked it up? But the, um, the, 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 there was a, the 50th, um, uh, there was a special show for the 50th birthday of the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, and, and they were on it, and I was emceeing it, or whatever it was, hosting it, and, and there was a line-up afterwards. And they were, I mean, they didn't care. That was all girl power, you know, and the Prince of Wales and, oh, wonderful, lovely, thank you so much. <laughs> and, and he got to them, and the first thing, em, Emma Bunting um, yeah. said spice. to him, yeah, she said, <laughs> she said, oh, sir, sir, highness, sir, sir, um, do you have a Prince Albert? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, yes, I'm his great great grandson, yes. Yeah. No, do you have one? He said, well, he's, he's, he was the husband of Queen Victoria. Yeah. No, but I, and he looked at me completely baffled that he didn't know what a Prince Albert was. So I had to say, well, sir, it's, a, it's an item of intimate jewellery. <laughs> he said, what, what do you mean? I said, no, further south. <laughs> <laughs> this is called a Prince Albert? I said, yes. And he was like, oh, my heaven, he had to have a lie down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I admired the, the spunk, as it were, to, to you know, to <laughs> how an Australian would put it, you know, to... It's an icebreaker. Yeah, no, to, to, a... to ask him... I think we have a picture of the, oh, the no, moment really? he met them. There he is. Yeah. Uh, well, that's me in the background. Yes, yeah, oh. uh, everyone seems very distracted by Jerry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Prince Charles is just pointing at her absentmindedly. <laughs> you know, he actually, he did tell me, I, don't, I think it's OK to, to repeat this, but Prince Wales did tell me once that the best piece of advice his father had ever given him he said, when, uh, when you're doing a photograph and um, you're doing a line-up and there are women, always look only into their eyes. Don't for a second let your eyes drop to their chest, because that's when the photograph goes on. Yeah. And if you look, he's not looking down. All the rest of us, even us gay boys, are looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Stephen Fry has a book. He's oh, got a book heavens, out. Heavens I know he has. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I've yes. got it here. It's, it's in called... your cupboard. It is, in, it is cupboard. in my cupboard, my capacious <laughs> cupboard. Uh, mythos. Now, this is Greek myths retold. Mm. And it's one of the when you go through this book, you realize that actually we know. I think yeah. people think we don't know these yeah. stories, but actually, when you see all the names, they're all things they're we deep use. deep within the DNA, as it were, yeah. of our culture, aren't they? I mean, yeah. Uh, I remember when the internet started, I remember thinking it was the most magnificent thing that had ever happened in human history. It was even greater than printing. It would bring us all together. And it reminded me of Pandora, who was a... You know, the, the gods made this woman, the first woman, and uh, it means all gifted in Greek, Pandora. And they sent her down um, with, with this box and it and and she she arrived and she had all the gifts and she was perfect and everyone fell in love with her but she she couldn't help but open this box and things flew out of the box now that was that was the internet i i thought it was perfect i thought it was going to break down barriers mm. we would all understand each other everything would be love and knowledge and tolerance and a, a genuine empathy all all the national barriers would break down instead of which like pandora's box out flew all the ills of the world you know in, in the case of pandora it was uh, starvation and murder and lies and and hatred and intolerance and all these things flew out and and these pests settled in the world and that's the terror of the internet it seemed to happen it was going to be so great and what went wrong it, it was a pandora's box yeah. but it's interesting because all these stories they you know they they, they warn us of the they all do. these all they're, these dangers and great stories and they all have a moral in the end yes. and these are such old stories and yet what you're saying sort of means we have learned nothing absolutely from them absolutely <laughs> squid yeah no. nothing and not to be uh, did you know all these stories I, I i was obsessed with them as a child but obviously i 
researched them again, yeah. busied myself in, in, in looking at them up. And they're so great. They are, aren't they? Do you, have you enjoyed them? I have. Oh, do, oddly, I studied Greek and Roman civilization at university. Did you? Really? <laughs> I did for a year because they failed no one. <laughs> <laughs> And who was your favourite hero? Oh, no, honestly, I did nothing. I just, I, I just, I picked my nose and burnt holes in a coffee cup. That's all I did. I did nothing. So this, this was very good to read. Oh. They, they were fresh to my mind. <laughs> uh, right, it's time to meet our final guest. For the last 27 years, this pop superstar has been part of our lives. Now he unveils his own life in the new book, Reveal. Please welcome Mr. Robbie Williams. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> mine's about farting. <laughs> <laughs> that, that say, we love having you on the show, Bobby Williams. Thank you very much. Oh, we love because you always tell great stories. But do the people who love you, your friends and family, are they sitting at home now, sort of terrified of what stories you're going to tell? Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> and I'd like to apologise to all of my family, my wife. And all of the celebrities I'm about to slag off. <laughs> well, no, because your wife, your, I think your wife, Ida, was she genuinely upset after you told the story about her giving birth? Yeah, she was genuinely upset, yeah. <laughs> because I, I said at the birth of our chi first child, Teddy, I said that it, because uh, I was in the delivery room and the head was coming through, and I, it, it, it was, it reminded me, well, it, I thought it was like my favourite pub burning down. <laughs> but I'm, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to discover that she's opened an off-licence around the back. <laughs> with, with the second child. Oh, oh it's, going to be, it's going to be a quiet Christmas. <laughs> 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 uh, now, uh, before we get to the book, I have to say, now, you, you, you know everyone on the couch, but have you met Pink in the flesh before? We've met before, once, yeah. yeah, once in Los Angeles, and uh, Pink's uh, got a... Fr we've got a mutual friend. Mm. And her mutual friend got a hold of me on email and said, Pink wants to talk to you. Can, is it all right if I give her your email? And I'm like, yeah, please do. Very excited to find out what Pink wants. And then, uh, then you sent an email back, and it was sort of like, I'm not making Edna Taylor this. I don't understand it at all. And uh, there was, like, several emails before you were like, wait, are you Robbie the chef? <laughs> I'm Robbie the Williams. <laughs> but we... What were you saying to him? I think I was asking him about salmon. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I tried my best to <laughs> Yeah. But we laughed. <laughs> we did. Now, uh, the book, the book, uh, Reveal, here it is. Yeah. Uh, by Chris Heath, who obviously spent an awful lot of time with you and was ac had access to kind of your life. And yeah. this is so you. Because a lot of these books can feel a bit guarded, a bit filtered, and this doesn't. No, it's um, not. No, it really isn't. And actually, what's really nice is that the Chris Heath kind of puts in the book, uh, you know, after he'll listen to you and I are talking, and I said to them, is it okay to put this in the book? Yeah. And you say yes. Yeah, fire I ahead. think the problem is that I don't proofread them. <laughs> So if I'd have proofread it, if I'd have read it at all, I'd have known, I'd have gone, oh, no, God, they can't know that about me. That makes me an awful person. But all the awful stuff is in there and hopefully interesting bits and I, I hope to make you laugh. But... And, and they, they are amazing stories, but obviously they're not... You're not the only person in the book. Did you contact other people? Like, for instance, Jerry Halliwell, did you ring her and say, is it OK if I put that story about? No, I haven't done that. <laughs> No, she doesn't come out of it badly. It's just, it's just. She, she, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't come no, out of it badly. No, so no. You, you were you were dating at the time. Well, we were dating. We were friends, and uh, you know, and um, <laughs> I used to have this uh, flat in Notting Hill, and um, the window was 
it was quite public. It was quite a public flat, and I'd be watching the TV, and a bus would pull up, and it'd be the top deck, and they'd just be like watching Robbie Williams watch the television <laughs> <laughs> every every 20 minutes. And uh, that particular evening, Jerry was around at the flat, and uh, I don't know how, but 20 to 25 paparazzi were outside, and they were letting the flashlights go off like this, trying to get us to come to the window. And I thought, I'm going to phone the police and see what my rights are. And I, and I don't want to bother the police, but I'd like to know, because this is weird. Mm. And the policeman came around, and I said, I'm really sorry to get you around, mate. Uh, uh, I don't want to be a hindrance, but I've got all of these paparazzi, and I just want to know what my rights are. And the, the policeman goes, can I stop you? And I said, uh, yeah. And he said, uh, when you start out in your career, that's when you want the press, isn't it? But then when the press wants something from you, <laughs> You don't like that, oh. do you? And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, no. I, I've got a policeman in my house and a Jerry Halliwell hiding in the cupboard right next to the policeman <laughs> while he's having this conversation. And, and I'm like, oh, no, I've just got to get him out because I don't want to be told off, you know. And, I, I, and I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks for coming around. You're right, I'm sorry. Doff the cap off. He went. And I'm like, oh, Jerry, um, we, we can't do anything about the paparazzi and we, uh, we should get out of here. And I had the genius idea to put her in a hold all. <laughs> a very small person. <laughs> and, and I literally put her in this duffel bag <laughs> and put her over my shoulder. <laughs> and like the paparazzi are all taking pictures. And I'm like, hi guys. <laughs> she had a car and I put her in the boot of a car. <laughs> right? Which is funny. <laughs> So, when we got to the service station and I had a KFC, I could have let her out. <laughs> I, I could have let her out, but I, you know, na nature called and I, I, I had to have that chicken. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the moment Jerry Halliwell was putting a whole doll in my house. It's in the book. And, and there is something about, and I, if you, you know, you guys have probably done this too, that rock star bad behaviour, that, that... I don't know what it is about rock stars. Like, you know, have you ever done the television out the window? No. Television out the window? Oh, no. <laughs> Did you ever think about doing the television out the window, but you knew it was just um, stupid mugs game? My manager threw a television out the window in Australia and in Perth. Um, and um, suddenly my Australian promoter came up just in a bedsheet and said, Darling, it's like Beirut down there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> but no, I've never, I've never done that. But no. the thing about these books is, they, they are hard to get right, because you are doing one right now, Elton, aren't you? A book, yeah. Yeah. And are you going to be... Yes, are, I am. Okay. Mm, yeah. Should people be worried? <laughs> Some people, yeah. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a nasty book. Yeah. But there are, I mean, I've lived the rock and roll life and a lot of things have happened. Did you put Leo Sayer in a hold <laughs> 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 He'd be perfect. Yeah. Uh, Pop in, Leo. You make me feel like <laughs> <laughs> and Karen Mulligan, you won't. Well, I doubt you'd write an autobiography, would you? No, I like. I mean, because you don't even tell people what you do for a living. No, I can't handle the disappointment when people. Because <laughs> you say you're an actress, and they go, "Oh wow, what have you been in?" And then you list off like 15 independent films that had an audience of about. My mum and um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my next door neighbours, and they look so crushed that I just lie and I say, like, I'm studying geography at university. <laughs> 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 I told someone I was a documentary filmmaker last week. It was an Uber driver, and he told me his favourite film was Saw. And then he <laughs> asked me what I did. Um, and I said, <laughs> I said, I'm making a documentary. Because I was going to a sort of filmy place, you know, and it looked yeah. like I was going, you know, so yeah. I didn't want to crush You him. don't really want a driver whose favourite film is Saw. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a worry, will you? I know, and he told Did you me have that, your like, finger on your phone? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like the first thing he said. Wow. Yeah. That is weird. Was yeah. weird. That was the opener. Yeah. That was his opener. Well, because I was going to a film studio and he was like, oh, I love movies. My favourite movie is Saw. And human What centered. do you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, very quickly, because uh, Pink is about to perform, uh, but can you just quickly tell us uh, the story about being in L.A. and uh, meeting the gangster? Yeah. 
So, um, I, in Los Angeles, before children, I used to have this house that was just for football. I had a football pitch in the back. This and is it, so rock and roll. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. A, special, a special house for football. A special house for football. And then the kids came and that was the end of that. That was the end of the fun. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I'm up there one evening playing football and there's a lot of people up there. Small drive. Somebody's parked on the drive and my neighbour can't get his car up the drive. My neighbour is uh, Joey Pesci. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, here, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the exact look that he gave as he turned into the football pitch with a nine iron and came out every... You mother... I'll do this. You mother... <laughs> I don't fuck... And it was, it was absolutely terrifying because, you know, he does that face so well. And I was absolutely mortified and pretended it wasn't my house. <laughs> I don't know, it's an idiot, the guy that owns the place. But you should and... have been like Macaulay Culkin and done all these booby traps for him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think. So I, I'm, I'm now... I sort of scarper and I get out of there. And uh, the next day, I hastily arrange a sign that says no parking, and I, I stick it down so everybody knows, including Mr. Joey Pesci, sorry, mate, that, um, you know, that I was doing something to stop this from happening. That evening, I went to uh, an Italian restaurant, and the guy came over to me, and he went, hey, I really like what you did for Joey. <laughs> So now I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm socially awkward and socially unaware and I'm now proper shitting myself. <laughs> and I'm, I'm watching people, as they leave the restaurant, kind of go up to him and sort of kiss him like this. And, like, 20 people have done it and I don't, I don't want to go to the loo because <laughs> I don't want him to see me again. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, I don't, and as I'm leaving, I think I, I must go to the loo. I can do it. So I go to the loo and I'm coming back. And as I'm, as I'm leaving this Italian restaurant, we stand up a yeah, sec. He stood on some stairs, this guy, this gangster dude, and I sort of, like, was so nervous. I, I went over to him and just went... <laughs> Kissed his Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's still alive. He's still alive. Still alive. Okay. Yeah. okay, it is time for music. Uh, Pink, if you'd like to go over to your band. There she goes. Uh, performing What About Us from the new album Beautiful Trauma, it is Pink. Very quickly, uh, Pink, I for totally forgot to mention earlier, you at the AMAs, uh, the American Music Awards, I don't know if you saw this. I became a stunt woman. No. You, yes. So you're <laughs> hanging, how many floors, that's you in the, in the that's purple That's me, that little ant. <laughs> how many floors up are you there? Uh, I don't know how many floors, I was 200 feet. Wow, we've got a close-up of you, it is really you. But the you. best part was the people inside the rooms. So uh. it's a hotel? Yes. Uh. And people were in their rooms? They were just like... <laughs> and were you singing live? Yes, I was. What possessed you? Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was terrified. Was, were you? I'm was, glad you were scared because it'd be weird if you weren't. I don't need to do that again. No. Check. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you, you have become fond of the aerial. Work. I do. I love it. It's fun. Were you once pulled? What well, didn't you have an accident once where you were pulled off stage? I remember seeing into that a barricade. That's right. It was the first time I've ever impressed my husband. Because <laughs> he's a, a yeah. stunt driver and everything. It was like <laughs> finally a real crash. <laughs> he's, he shares the name That's with Kerry, doesn't he? I know. He's Kerry as well. He yeah. got beat up for having that name. Oh really? <laughs> well, that's a well, happy that's story. He thinks. <laughs> Said it was a girl's name. Yeah, it's kind of unisex. Right? I think so. Cary Grant. Yeah. He's, well, he, no. he didn't have the. He didn't have the. Good, yeah, good point. Yeah. Good we point. could talk about this a long time. <laughs> 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 Normally, it, yeah, I feel bad leaving the couch to go to the red chair, but no, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Ooh. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? <laughs> Hamish. Hamish, lovely. Where are you from, Hamish? Uh, Herefordshire. Okay. And uh, do, you, do you work in Herefordshire? 
Uh, no, so I'm now living in London. I'm training to be a theatre director. Oh, right. Wow. He's training to be one. Mm. Not one yet, <laughs> but soon. <laughs> uh, do you graduate? Uh, I graduate uh, this, well, summer of 2018. Okay. So. Then he'll be ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Hamish, off you go with your story. So I was on a family holiday at Centre Parks and we were racing down the rapids that they have there. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw my dad up ahead of me, so I thought to slow him down, I'll kind of stealthily sneak up on him and uh, pull down his swimming trunks um, to slow him down and overtake. So I did exactly that, snuck up on him, pulled down his swimming trunks, and he turns around and it's not my dad. <laughs> <it's>... <laughs> And I have no idea what to do. I'm staring at him, so I just slowly start to slide them back. <laughs> give him a He's a war game. He's a war. Oh, good. I wondered who that was. <laughs> I rather enjoyed it. Uh, have we loaded the chair? Oh, we have. Why, hello. Um, no. <laughs> Yes. This, I believe I know you. It's Ida, isn't it? It is. Hi, Graham. Hi, Hi. everybody. Hello. Is this Ida's revenge? It is, Graham. It is. It isn't. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. Uh, Christmas, Christmas just got even quieter. <laughs> uh, well done, everyone, if you'd like to join us on the show. No, he flipped her. That's it. That's it. Check off down his fire website at this address. And that is it for tonight. Please say a huge thank you to my guest, Pink! <laughs> Stephen Fry! <laughs> Gary Mulligan! Robbie Williams! And Sir Elton John! <laughs> Join me next week with a packed sofa. We've got pop star Noel Gallagher, uh, funny ladies Dawn French and Rebel Wilson, actors Jessica Chastain and Jack Black, comedian Kevin Hart and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye. -bye.